one for life and a further four more also face life bans for corruption. This Guardian story is important because for the first time it exposes that it's not only players that have been match fixing, umpires have also been doing things they shouldn't have been doing. The one umpire for Kazakhstan was banned in February 2015 for chatting to another umpire on Facebook and trying to get him to manipulate the scoring of matches. We've also found out that um, a, a second umpire from Croatia was also uh, banned for 12 months. The International Tennis Federation never released this. Then there is four other officials that also face sanction. Now they are accused of effectively um, manipulating uh, tennis matches so that gamblers can profit on them. All umpires at you know, a sort of senior level of tennis have a, have a tablet. What they're supposed to do after every point is type in who's won the point. And so the scores get updated. Those scores are sent around the world to bookmakers, to live score sites and so on. What these umpires were suspected of doing was waiting for up to a minute before actually putting the score down. That meant that they had time to perhaps text the gambling contact and say, look, this player A has won the next two points, he's going to win the game. So that meant that these scores that went around the world weren't updated. So bookies prices stayed the same, it meant that people could gamble on whatever the prices were. So what this allowed gamblers to do was to bet on a player that had actually won a game when, when in reality the score was saying it was still say juice or it was still 40-30. The reason why this, that the umpires were able to get away with this was because this was at the third tier of tennis is uh, tour. So there, were, there was rarely live streams of, of matches and there was very little security as well. This story is important for a number of reasons. For the first time it shows that it's not just players that are involved in corruption, but also a number of officials that have been accused of either being corrupt or uh, have actually been shown to have been banned after doing things that are wrong. Secondly, it exposes the, fa the fault lines in the sport that claims it's doing everything it can to be transparent. In this case, uh, the ITF never mentioned any of these, these cases. Uh, how long did they know? Did they sit on it? Should they have done more to expedite this so that you know, the wider public knew about it? A third issue is that the ITF in 2012 signed a deal with a, a sports data company called Sports Radar for $70 million. Now that enabled them to, to send scores all around the globe and so on. The question is, by having live scores from every single um, Futures tournament, which is the third rung of the tennis ladder, were they in some ways unwittingly aiding those people that wanted to be corrupt 